Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. I hope that you're all doing well. Welcome back to another planty video. This is a video that I have been excited to make for quite a while now. So today we are going to be talking all about pawn and specifically how I make my own pawn. Now I've had a ton of questions whenever I mention pawn at all um, of people asking like, what is it? I have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> etc. So my simple explanation is pawn is just a rocky substrate. It can be used like a regular potting mix where you just water it through or you can use it semi hydroponically similar to LECA, which is the route that I'm taking. And it consists of three main components, which are pumice, lava rock and zeolite and i also do add some slow release fertilizer to mine lechuza is the main brand that makes pond but it's often really tricky to get your hands on and it's pricey so a lot of people have been resorting to the diy route which is what i ended up doing and it's been going really well i'm gonna show you how i make it and how i've been using it and to start i'm actually gonna show you my plants that i have living in pond right now so I only have a few of them in pawn. Um, this was the first batch that I made. These were my test subjects and they're all absolutely thriving. So I'm super impressed and really excited to be converting some more plants into it today. So the first one that I converted to pawn is my little cutie alocasia black velvet. This is what it looks like here. Now, if you have been here for a while, then you may remember that I completely rotted this plant in the fall when it was in LECA and I ended up rerouting the bulb in a sphagnum moss ziploc propagation bag situation. Um, so I re, re, I was gonna say rerouted. I rerouted it um, and then I ended up transferring it from sphagnum into pawn. It actually started rooting again in the sphagnum like a couple months ago before I transferred it. Um, but I'm happy to report that it is doing really well in pawn. And look at this, you guys, we have a new little leaf coming in there. So this will be the only time it's had more than one leaf since I first got it. I think it had two leaves when I first got it. Um, but yeah, so I'm so excited that this thing is finally happy. Um, so I'll try to show you some roots. You can see some roots there. You can see them all around. Um, they're pretty small, like dainty. So it might be hard to see some of them, but this thing is definitely rooted in here. There is a lot of algae buildup. Um, some algae isn't a problem, but I don't want this to be like covered in algae. So I'm gonna have to, you know, flush it out and deal with that situation. But um, I haven't done that before. I haven't gotten that far. This is as far as I have gotten with my pawn. Um, experience so but algae aside these plants are doing fantastic this is the second one that I converted to pawn um, actually I didn't even convert this this was um, a water propagation that I ended up putting in pawn look at how many leaves this has I don't remember when I showed this I hauled this oh it must have been a couple of months ago maybe in my May haul I'm gonna guess um, and it's just totally taken off. Um, it has multiple new leaves coming in right now. It's so cute. This is my Tenanthi Liberciana. Um, yeah, very cute, very well rooted in here as well. I just have it in like a mason jar glass and yeah, it is really, really happy in there. This just lives on my desk in the bedroom and it gets some east Eastern light. And then this is the last one. Well, kind of the last one. I have one more, but it's kind of dead. It's been dead the whole time, but um, this is my Hoya Polynera. Um, this is one of the cuttings. Oh, I actually put this in pawn in a video, in one of my plant chores videos. Um, and it has just recently actually put out some roots that I can see on the side here. So I'm really happy to see that. It seems to be doing well. It hasn't given me any new leaves or anything, but it's definitely stable in there. So yeah, very excited about that. And then this is the last one I was talking about that I'm not really gonna count, but um, this was already looked like this when I put it into pawn. I kind of did this as a last ditch effort. This was my, Oh gosh, what was this? It was a Hoya Bertonier, which is so sad that it croaked on me. I don't know what happened. I hauled this in the winter and yeah, it lost one leaf and then all of a sudden all of its leaves were going downhill. It did still have roots though, which is why I decided to put it in pond just to see. So I don't know what's going on in there. I don't see any roots on the outside. I don't know. 
I'm just very, I just don't throw plants away until like once it's been dead like this for several months, then I'll probably pull it out and take a look at what's happening. But I've revived Hoya from just like a stick before. So you never know folks, but it's most likely dead. All right, so as you can see, so far my experience has been really great. I'm eager to get more plants into Pond. So the reason that I started using Pond is mostly just because I like to experiment with different mediums and just different ways to grow my plants. I think that it's really fun. Um, but one of the big pros for me is that it is much lower maintenance than my soil plants. I hardly ever have to do anything to these guys. I just top up the water like once a week or two and that's pretty much it. Because they're not in soil, they are a little bit less prone to pests as well, which is a really nice bonus. But yeah, I think a lot of people convert just because it reduces the maintenance. It makes your collection a lot more manageable. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about my experience. It's been going really well. As you can see, I only have a few plants in ponds, so I don't have like a ton to say right now, but, um, but let's jump into how I mix up my pond. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the ingredients really quickly and where I got them because it was a really awesome hack that I learned from, oh gosh, I think it was a Hoya uh, Facebook page. I think actually somebody DM'd me and told me about it and then told me it was on that Facebook page. So I went to the Facebook post. Um, I have no idea who it was that messaged me and told me about this, but thank you so much if you're watching this. Um, so I got these two huge big bags from Home Hardware and I'm gonna tell you what they are. So these two large bags are actually ice grip sold at Home Hardware. So they're marketed as like an alternative to salt in the winter time so that you don't slip. Um, so the first one is called Lava Grip. I'll have these links down below so that you guys can find them. But the first one is called Lava Grip and it is just lava rock. So this is 16 kilograms of lava rock. And then the second one, this one, this massive one, this is 20 kilograms and this is called Eco Traction Ice Gripper and this is Zeolite. So somebody contacted the company and figured out that that's what this is and it can be used for DIY ponds. So awesome because these bags, they were somewhere around like $20 each, 20 something dollars each Canadian. So, um, so much more affordable. So these are gonna last me a really long time. And then the last ingredient that we will be using is pumice. So we actually use two parts pumice, two parts lava rock, and one part of the zeolite. So that bag of zeolite is gonna last forever. And then the last thing that I put in to make it just like Lechuza Pawn is Osmocoat Plus. This is just a slow release fertilizer. You need the literal tiniest amount. You can order this online or I've actually seen it in store at some local plant shop. So you might be able to find it where you live. I was tipped off about this um, from my friend, the gardening queen on Instagram. She is so smart when it comes to all the planty things and she asked me if I wanted some because she was ordering some so that was really nice and just makes it so much easier for me not having to constantly use my nutrient water for these plants. So right now I'm just gonna make as large of a batch as I can um, because I have a bin to store it and it's just easy to do it all at once. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm just going to put the ingredients in in that ratio, um, two parts pumice two part lava rock and one part zeolite. And then we're gonna take it outside and rinse it all off. Okay, so I just wanna go rinse any dust off of this, so I'm gonna take this outside and use the hose.
Okay, so after it's all rinsed, I just dump it into my pawn bin. Ooh, heavy. And I just mix it all up. I'm gonna do a few more batches off screen just to fill this bin up a little bit more so that I have some made, but I'll show you guys what it looks like. So this is what it is looking like. It is pretty dark, it's wet right now. Um, also I should say that pumice comes in different sizes. Also the one that I use is pretty small. It says it's a quarter inch medium. This they classify this as medium size, but this is kind of the bottom of the bag. So it's not great. These ones are a lot bigger. Um, they say that this is quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. So I don't know. I prefer probably the bigger one. I, I don't really know which is best to be honest with you. I just use whatever I have. So. Oh, also, there was something else I wanted to mention when we were talking about the pros and the cons. So another thing that is good about Pawn, similar to Lekka, is that it's an inorganic substance. So you can reuse it really easily, which is awesome. I love that. It's a lot harder to reuse potting mix. Like it kind of, you know, expires. You can pick out your um, amendments, but um, in general, this is pretty easy to boil and reuse. So, so that's another good thing about it. All right, so now is the fun part. We are gonna be potting up some plants into pawn. The first one that I'm going to be converting is this very sad looking Calathea Worshawixii. Wors um, the velvet jungle, jungle velvet, the velvety Calathea, um, which I love. This is one of my favorite plants. I, in preparation, I knew that I wanted to put it in pawn, so I transferred it to water. It was already not doing fantastic um but after transferring it to water it let go of two these two leaves um hanging on to its newest leaf and i just saw today that it is giving me a new leaf right now which is so exciting so hopefully that's not disrupted too much but i do really just want to get this into pond i've been waiting for quite a while it's probably been in water for over a month now i would say just in anticipation of its conversion so that's the first one I'm gonna do. The second one is my Anthurium viterifolium, which rotted and was rerooted in perlite. It is so full of algae in here. Um, this plant's just gonna look and feel so much better once it is into pond. And I really hope that it takes off. This Anthurium is so cool and I just really want a big one. And then the last one we are going to be converting is my Anthurium clarinervium, which is looking crazy right now. It actually is blooming. I'll cut that off probably. Um, and this is the newest leaf here. It's very well rooted in perlite as well. So I'm sure it's gonna do great in pond. All right, let's start with this guy. So I think I'm actually just gonna use the same jar, might as well. So I'm gonna give that a clean quick. And yes, we are repotting on uh, the bin lid again because all of my potting mats are full of soil. So we're back to the, we're back to the bin. Okay, so this part is just like a regular repotting. I'm just gonna fill it up with some of the substrate.
All right, I'm gonna do the same to the other two and then I will show you the next step. I'm gonna take this to the sink and just put this over the strainer and use water to get the perlite off all of the roots. I will be right back. Perlite basically rinses right off of roots, which is another reason that I prefer it over sphagnum for propagating plants. This is how the roots are looking, so cute. I love this little guy. He actually has tiny, tiny, tiny new growth coming in as well, so hopefully that makes it okay. with how that looks so cute and then last but not least the clarinervium now this thing has some serious serious roots I don't even know how I'm going to get it out of here oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy Also, I will be reusing all of my perlite um, now since I found out that you can boil it. Same with sphagnum moss. I'm just like reusing everything now. It's awesome. Okay, so as you can see, this thing has really good roots. This had also rotted and I rerooted it in perlite. Don't have great luck with Ethereum. My forgetty eye is doing really well though, that I got a couple months ago. Okay, I'm gonna go rinse this under the sink. Be right back. Okay, I was gonna put it back in this jar, but it's just the top is so narrow. I want something wider, so I'm gonna be using this old Thai food takeout container. Be way easier when it comes time to repot it. Okay guys, last two steps, we are almost done. So we are just gonna add a little bit of the slow release fertilizer. This lasts from up to, this lasts about six months. I think it's four to six months, so. Now we're just gonna use the tiniest amount. I think that they recommend something like a quarter of a teaspoon per four inch pot. But somebody in my Discord um, chat actually brought up something interesting and it's that that could be too much for these because this is a closed system. So it's not being flushed out or anything. So I honestly just put like the tiniest amount and I'm just gonna put it kind of around the perimeter on one side. Um, and I'm doing it that way because that's the way my friend told me to do it. Um, and she knows more about this stuff than I do. So I'm literally just putting like that much in this big one. I'm gonna put it on the other side. Okay, perfect. And I'm literally only gonna put 
put like maybe that many in this one and same with the calathea tiny tiny there's only five little pellets in here done and then we don't have to worry about fertilization for six months we can just water with plain water which is so nice and that is our last and final step you guys so i just keep water like just on the bottom like i don't know for this i'd probably keep about an inch of water and then just refill it once it's getting low i find these squirt bottles super handy to use to fill these up so i'm just gonna do that So you can see the water line is about up to there. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it's about up to there. So I'm happy with that. This guy will be good for a couple of weeks now. And I just keep an eye on when the water runs low or runs dry. this one but it should be fine all right guys i think that's it i think that is all i have to say about pawn at this point in time i will definitely update and let you know how these plants are doing i'm not worried about them because they were all kind of like acclimated to semi-hydro or hydro to begin with which i would recommend when transferring your soil plants into pawn or leca is to root them in water a little bit first just makes the transition a lot easier and the success rate higher. But yeah, I hope that you guys like this video. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I would be happy to chat with you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel for more planty content. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.